Don't forget your safety chain when you're towing your boat. And just like that, we're live, folks. Welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. We're back out here on the 1970s Rinker. This is part three. We're gonna do some more, a little more digging in to make sure everything's where I want it to be before I yank this engine out. In this video, you're gonna see this engine run. You're gonna see this engine removed from the boat. You're gonna see this boat off of the trailer. You're gonna see the outdrive removed and we're gonna split everything apart and then we're gonna get into the guts of it. Let's just say that. And we gotta get all that stripped out of there so I can get the trailer emptied off and then we can begin the transplant operation. Nurse, pass me a 10 blade, please. That's what they do on Gray's Anatomy. It's always, everything starts with a 10 blade. Gotta cut them open. All right. So first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna check compression. And in order to check compression, I don't wanna have a whole bunch of fuel dumping. Squeak, 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 here we go. I don't wanna have a whole bunch of fuel dumping into the cylinder wall, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the hose out of the gas tank over here. You know, the, the 41 tank. We're gonna pull that out of there. We're gonna run the whole fuel system dry. And then once it's dry, we're gonna pull the spark plugs and check compression. Got it? Get it? Good, let's fire it up and see how, it's cold right now. Let's see how well it fires up. We're going to turn the water on there. Hey, Mercury. Water on. Now, if this carburetor is set right, what I should see here, when I give it full throttle and one squirt of juice is, boom, you see that drop completely shut? About right there, that's what you want. And we're going to put the negative back on the battery and we're just gonna bump this key just bump it this is bump it watch this oh it almost started what happening oh <laughs> i forgot to turn the uh ignition on that's why it only ran when i engaged this that's cold, people. That's how well this thing starts. And you see how fast it consumes fuel at an idle. <laughs> That's the fuel consumption rate. That's kind of cool. That's kind of fast.
bada bing. Now that didn't get that didn't get too hot, so it's gonna be pretty easy to pull the spark plugs out. We're gonna check compression to see what we got. We're also gonna do it as everybody says the proper way um, with a wide open throttle situation, choke wide open. Let's see what we got now. Where did my extension go? I am looking forward to getting out of this boat and playing around with it on an engine stand in the shop. Do two things here while we're checking this is uh, we'll look and see how the plugs are burning. Nice light tan down in there. Looks pretty good. I like it. Beautiful. That water got warm. At least the hose got warm. <laughs> see they're blowing through the spark plug holes making coming back whatever intake valves are open let a little bit of that come backwards out that's kind of cool it's either that or it's on fire one of the two they're all looking pretty good they all look exactly the same didn't expect much different than that anyway all right let's go with cylinder number one first and see what kind of compression we got here now we got the engine that's just warmed up a little bit, just enough to burn the fuel out of the carburetor. Circulated enough oil, just like it, you know, just like it would be. We got the carburetor wide open throttle, and we got all the other cylinders empty, so this thing will roll over easy enough for me. Let's see what it does here. Cylinder number one. <laughs> hundred and forty five easily hundred and forty five and uh, if you look at my paper that I talked about in the last video where to go it says uh, this is page three if you guys want to copy email me uh, where did it say it at I saw it on here uh, da, 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 da. compression ratio 8.5 to 1 oh it's somewhere on here I swear I saw it Close drive. They claim from the factory 140. Maybe it's in the other part of my book. But 140 uh, pounds is basically a good motor. So we got 145. This thing's like brand new. Now I'm curious because before when I had my mystery oil in it and all that kind of weird stuff going on to make sure there was nothing going to turn over dry we got anywhere from 145 to 170 something i'm kind of looking to see to get about let's just call it no more than 10 percent variation between all the cylinders <laughs> that's 150. so 145 and 150. i'm doing good Correct me if I'm wrong, leave comments, but I think you don't want any more variation, any more than 10% variation between the cylinders, just to kind of keep an even uh, pressure on the crank. Uh, let's see here. 145. Still a little bit of gas coming through them cylinders. I can smell it. But I got the ignition turned off. We got the ran the fuel out of it, so we can just run it over a few times here. It's still got oil pressure while we're turning it over, which is good. Number three, show me what you got. One forty. Number five. 140 on the nose. Number six. Whoops. 140. 
engine's like new, baby. That's cool. Quick oil check here. Still full and darn clean. I like it. All right, we'll stick all these back in. All right, well, I don't want to pull the valve cover off if it's going to rain. And I'm also not too worried about what's going on underneath the valve cover. All right, folks, you've seen me do this a thousand times. Okay, maybe eight. We're going to pull this out drive off so we can actually drop this boat on the ground. Yep, you heard me right, on the ground. Bye. Pop the cylinders off. Don't lose your rubber pieces. We'll loosen up the back ones a little bit. Give me a little more flexible room here. Here I'm using a 916 socket. And my little quarter inch impact here. There we go, out of the way. Out of the way. Go ahead and pull this off. Slip that out. It's amazing that it comes out. That's awesome. Once you got that done, the, the last thing you want to have is in forward gear. This one won't go in forward gear, but I'm going to go ahead and shove the handle in forward gear just in case so I don't wreck anything. But we need to back these sticks off. Don't lose them. We hear some thunder rolling. Good chance of some rain here in a little bit. Tighter than it should be. Perfect. Perfect. There's always one stubborn nut in the crowd, right? Cool parts, once you got it that far, we'll put it in forward ish. Dun dun dun. What was that? Oh, I thought it actually just fell off automatically. Automatically. I like to give her a couple of bumps here. See how that just pops loose? Just like that it's off that's that simple now what i like seeing in here is no rust you know it's just old and dirty and inside the boot if you look inside here and there's no oil or anything that means this seal is still holding which is awesome <laughs> out comes the out drive oh my son's telling me i didn't make a dad joke opportunity when i did he's right he's right he's right i'm slacking yeah that was straight ahead Cool. Now we're gonna have some fun. <laughs> now I'm gonna get all my crap out of the boat. And then we're gonna bring this thing down to the ground. But I think I'm gonna undo these lines under here first and get these out of my way. I don't wanna end up messing up my cylinders or messing up my, my connection underneath there. So I'll do that next. Basically under here, there's two 7 16 nuts you got to take off. It's raining pretty good now. I'm underneath the canopy and a tree, but that won't last long because my canopy looks like a wet diaper right now because the tore, the middle of it tore through. So it's pretty much ran its last run. Should be able to pop this down. Maybe a little bit of pryage. I don't know. Nope. Come on. Well, that ain't working. Whoa. There's no oil in there.
Yeah. That's not nothing. It's nothing bad, right? There you go. Let go inside. As you can see now, maybe it's pouring down rain, so we're going to take a break. But we did get a lot accomplished already. What you're about to witness here is done by a trained professional. Do not attempt to do what I'm getting ready to do here at home. You may cause personal injury, possibly even death. I repeat, do not do this at home. But what we're going to do is I got the Jeep hooked under the trailer, and I got the boat hooked to a tree with a chain. So we're going to pull the trailer out from under the boat. We're going to get the boat lowered to the ground so I can pull the engine out of it. That's the plan. Simple. Better untie this first. All right. So I'll have you watch that tail end and tell me when it's starting to, if it's going to do any damage to anything. Right. If it is, then we'll put some wood underneath there. Okay. I'm going to put it in four low. Just ease into it. Should I leave the mic out there so we can hear all the sound effects? Or not? All right, folks, I'm going to leave you back here sound wise so you guys can get an ear witness account of what's about to happen. Where do I put it? Let's put it right on the boat. Yeah. Well, if it goes sideways, I mean, it won't end up in the water like the last one. It's tight. It's tight. What was that noise? Some of the teak boards coming off. <laughs> Goodness is, it didn't hurt the mic. <laughs> Chain's still pretty tight though. <laughs> so I'm gonna get the chain loose, I gotta cut the tree down. Did the tree move at all? <laughs> uh, I didn't pay attention. <laughs> I don't think it would have. I didn't know. I guess not. Well, this is actually enough room to get the cherry picker slid in here. How hard would it take to beat him to take the back of the bolts off? Not hard. Then you just pull one off and it's slack. Uh, yeah, that doesn't... There we go. Oh, that's how you can do it. You just stand on it. Oh! Let's stand on it. That was almost enough. Just... There we go. Maybe 350 pounds. Yeah. Hey, Harry. How you doing, kitty cat? All right. Now, all I gotta do is block it up level. Yep, yep, like this. So, uh, grab those. Just stick them underneath that back right there. Wedge it in on the left side. Left side first there. See if that's going to hold it. Oh, yeah. Now I can hop over this thing like I'm hopping over a fence. Face first. That's over appetite. And you got room. No. I got so much room for activities. Because now that we got that out drive out, the engine can come out. We've got to take those two bolts off back here. And those two bolts off the front of the floor. And guess what? 
she lifts straight out of there and undo that boot and that hose and those wires that's it that's it We're just about done 10 easy steps 10 easy steps you said it buddy you know what we should do today We can let the sun go down a little bit more <laughs> and go to Cologne and get an ice cream. Sounds amazing. But then we can come back here and we can get that out of the way. Get the cherry picker underneath here. Poised to strike. Yeah, we took one of the teak out. Where was that one at? What that hit? Oh, that hit on the trailer, didn't it? Yeah. No. No, it hit on the chain. Chain got it. I didn't like those anyway. And I could literally get all this unhooked and get that out of here, split it out today. And then the neat part would be I could hook onto the front of the boat with a chain and drag it off over the hill so I don't have to look at it for a while. <laughs> then figure out how to drag it up on a trailer a long time from now. What, what, kind of, what kind of redneck would I be if I didn't have a boat up in my backyard on the ground? Eventually a tree grew out of it. And birds live in it, and squirrels, and... You got sound? Yeah. Okie dokie, artichoke. Well, here's how we go backyard marina surfing. Don't forget your safety chain when you're towing your boat. Now we go look for a boat ramp. Go slow so you don't ruin your gel coat. Next away. We have the engine out of the boat and on the hoist and taking up a lot more space in my shop while it's hanging on the hoist here's what i do even if it's temporary this is just a inexpensive way to to i don't know what you call it, store it and make it movable in your shop until you're ready to put it back in another boat or ready to put it up on the engine stand and actually take it apart and work on it Obviously this engine we're not going to be taking apart much further than what it is other than possibly replacing the water pump. But I'm going to show you what I do here. It's inexpensive for the most part. The only expensive part is these casters. And this cost me, what were they, about uh, $14 a piece for some good decent casters that have a 265 pound capacity a piece. That should be enough. But so I, I take a two by six. I'm cutting the first piece to 18 inches. I'm cutting two of them to 18 inches and I cut one to 36. And once it's cut to 36, I rip it down the middle. 
And this is all I need to build my uh, engine stand. And here's what we're gonna do. I always put the crown, you know, so it's like this. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Put this one over here. And we'll do this one like this. Yep. And all I'm gonna do is screw this down. What you need to end up with, basically, and you're gonna see it when it all comes together. We're gonna end up with about, I need more than 12 inches right here, because my engine stand base is 12 inches. So we'll make sure that this has got a little bit of wiggle room here. It gives me about 12 and a half is what I did there. As long as I bring them out to the edge. <coughs> then I take my square and you know, let's just, as long as we're doing it, let's do it right. Let's see how square we got this. About right there. I just got my regular three inch deck screws here. Now you flip it over. Now what I've got here is some 5 16 lags, inch and a half long, with a 5 16 washer. Just like that, you got yourself a cart that you can easily move this magnificent beast around on pretty easy, minimal effort. Keep your floor swept, swept clean and your wheels won't get all nasty and it just keeps on going, right? Cool. Now, for a little extra security, you can take a couple of wood lag screws and run down through here. Two in the front, two in the back. This can sit here, you can move it about your shop, put your engine hoist away, and uh, stick that in the corner till you're ready for it. Or you can start messing with it if you want. You can start working on the front end, change the thermostat, do whatever you want, right? Change your oil, change the starter, adjust your valves. You can do all kinds of stuff with it sitting here. All right, now I'm gonna build another one. And you guys are gonna ask me why? Well, one, I bought me another two by six. I had this one laying around, but I bought me another two by six, eight foot long, which will make another one. But this was 36 inches long. The ones for the four cylinders only need to be 28 inches long. So, and I'm gonna have one that I'm gonna be pulling out a big blue back there, four cylinder, that needs to go somewhere. So it's gonna have to go in its own stand. And then we'll go from there. Then we'll get it ready to put this old big old inline six back in so just wanted to share that with you i didn't know if you guys had a a way that you deal with your engines like that i've got now with that one there i got four of them sitting in here on those same kind of casters ready to pull out and play with at any time i want and i can stick them like the four cylinders actually fit underneath i can fit three of them underneath my workbench over there and they're sitting there waiting for me to, and waiting for a, a candidate for a boat that's worthwhile putting one of those in and not something that's all rotted out so i'm gonna get busy Cutting up the two by or two by six uh, for the other one. Get that together, and then I'm gonna kind of clean up my shop a little bit because I gotta make some room in here. And then we're gonna go out there and see if I can get that four cylinder started. Stay tuned. It's probably I think it's been I looked it up. I think it's been almost two years since I started that four cylinder, and that one I'm pretty sure I did put electronic ignition in. And uh, we're gonna add some gas to it, check the oil, and we're gonna fire it up and see if she runs. Then I want to fog it really well because it's going to sit 
in here for a bit so i want to have it prepped the nice thing is i don't have to winterize them necessarily because they're in my climate controlled shop chilling for the winter all right i should say not chilling all right let's go cut up some more wood and let's do some more let's do some more of these crafts arts and crafts right just in case any of you have been wondering what one of these big old complete whole engine inline sixes way with all the peripherals on it well i'm going to see if my big game scale will actually uh pick it up there it is Yeah, that's floating right there, in case anybody was wondering. 500 and, uh, let's see, 39 pounds. Now, I want to know what the four cylinders weigh. So when I take the four cylinder out of the boat, I'll be able to say 539 versus, that's all that scale can do is 550. So 539, that's not bad. Curiosity satisfied. The other thing I wanted to mention for you guys, if you're planning on building a little cart to put your engine on like this, buy four swivel casters. It's easier to maneuver everything around and tuck it in places versus uh, too rigid and too swivel. Just, just a heads up. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, Michael, why did you power wash a boat you're going to throw away? Well, because I'm saving this stuff back here. And now that I've got it all cleaned up, as you can see, I can see every nut and bolt crack and crevice in this whole thing. So it's going to make it easier to remove. I am removing this entire assembly right here. That'll be gone too, but that's a, that's a, a trim pump, right? So we're going to get that all taken out and we got to remove all this as well this is going to go on into the big blue boat this is a different designed out drive that has the hoses going in from the bottom which is a much better and preferred situation that i want to have on my boat so this is pretty much going to wrap up part three now there is there going to be a part four huh Maybe I, maybe I should go that 70s into that 60s boat. And the 60s boat I call Big Blue. And as you can see on this out drive here, what's taken off and removed is, see these have the hydraulic lines that come into here and go back behind here and do some funny things in there. You know, they do weird things here where instead of coming in from the bottom, very bottom down under here, that's why I want to switch it. Now, my understanding is I might have to, might have to put a bigger hole back here. That's okay. I can do that. So in part four, I'm going to call it of this series, we're going to start off by taking that off. I probably don't spend a lot of time on camera taking that off. Unless I run into something that I th uh, feels important to show you, some little details, maybe some little tricks, we'll go from we'll go from there. But then, first thing I want to do over here is this engine. I don't believe has been fired up in two years, and it was running perfect when I last ran it. Obviously, I've winterized it, uh, and it sat for two years. So we're going to unwinterize it and see how well it starts after sitting for two years. 
when properly winter winterized should be a lot of fun i'm hoping but i've got a trick and you guys got to hang out for this because that boat is tall and my cherry picker is not that tall and i've got an idea how i'm going to get that four cylinder out of there and if it works out well to get the four cylinder out of there i'm probably going to use the same technique to put that 539 pound six cylinder back in there so got to come back to part four you're going to have to see the transplant happen first i got to remove the old heart and then we got a big heartbeat of america there the old six cylinder we're going to put back in there well folks i hope you found this video fun informative and helpful maybe it's helped you on your project maybe it didn't maybe it's just you know enjoyable to watch and consume some popcorn and some cold snacks of your choosing we'll go from there be good to one another remember if it ain't broke fix it till it is and i'll see you on the next video man is it much cooler in here Whew.